Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show, and today we're reviewing. We're review. Today we are reviewing. It's really hard to say we're review. We are reviewing money-related financial topics on TikTok because I've noticed this trend where either the advice is insanely good, like some of the best advice you're ever going to hear in your entire life when it comes to money, investing, business, and it's all for free, or it's complete crap. And sometimes it's really hard to differentiate between what's a steaming pile of uh, horse manure and what's gold. So today I want to do just that as soon as you hit the like button and subscribe. And I'm going to be watching some TikToks and letting you know exactly what I think. Enjoy. My most successful friends are like alcoholic, abusive dad, absent mom, you know, that kind of trauma like shapes people different, way different. That's hard to manufacture. You can do it, but it's risky. And that's the point, you know, and I literally recently have been telling guys like, hey, if you don't have the fire inside of you, get some credit cards and manufacture debt. And if you do that, guess what? Now you have to perform or else there's genuine consequences right. to you not performing. I love in the background, you just hear someone saying, yeah, right, right. Like it was going so well. And then it just nosedived. Like when he's saying in the beginning about, uh, you know, a lot of people having some hunger because they didn't grow up with it. I found that overall, it tends to be true, but it could, it could split off in two directions. One is that they come from a really difficult household that's all they know, and they lean towards that because that's what they're comfortable with. Other people want to get really far away from that, and they want to do the opposite. So if their parents are bad with money, they want to be really good with money. If their parents are you know, working nine to five, they want to start their own business. So it really just depends on the individual. And it's not to say that everyone who comes from a rough upbringing is going to be successful, but you know, it can light that fire. But him going and saying getting credit cards and then manufacturing some crisis, going and driving up the bills, now you just have this insane pressure where if you don't succeed at this thing, now you failed. And then you also have a whole bunch of debt. You basically just dug yourself a deeper hole from what you were trying to escape from. So I think it sounds like good intentions, horrible delivery. I would never recommend somebody rack up debt just as a way to motivate themselves. If that's what you have to do to motivate yourself, I think you got bigger problems. So I would solve that first. It takes less time to make a million dollars than it takes to make a hundred thousand. And the reason is you only think of solutions to the problems that you set for yourself and you start using superior vehicles to making money. Bro, what are you talking about? Listen to this first sentence. It takes less time to make a million dollars than it takes to make a hundred thousand. And the No, it doesn't. How? You got to make a hundred thousand dollars to make a million dollars. You make $100,000 first, then you make $101,000, 102, 103, and then eventually a million. It's actually impossible to make a million dollars before $100,000 because that's not how numbers work. <laughs> that's kind of funny. I see what Alex Ramosi is trying to say here. It, w when you could figure out a way to make a million dollars, it comes so quickly. Because at a million dollars, in most cases, if you're running your own business, you're solving problems on a mass scale, you're serving a very wide audience. For a lot of people, the 100K is gonna come from steady employment, it's gonna come from something a little bit more safe, stable on a smaller scale. But when you find ways to leverage that, then all of a sudden a million dollars seems possible. Like for me, for the longest time, I thought a million dollars would be unachievable in my lifetime. I thought when I started off working as a real estate agent, like the top agents were in my area making over a million a year, but they had been doing this for like 30 years. So I kind of thought to myself, okay, if I stay in this career for 30 years and I build out all of this clientele and I really work this one area and I get really good at it and by the time they retire, I'll go in and like, you know, I could get some of their business and they're not going to be around forever and, you know, eventually I could take their, their, their spot. But, uh, when YouTube really started taking off, I realized, like, wait a second, it's a, it's a lot uh, easier to make a million than a than hundred thousand just because you have the economies of scale. Like it took the same amount of time to make a YouTube video that reached a thousand people as it did to reach a million people. The work is pretty much exactly the same. So when I started seeing that, like, wow, you have, you have the power of the internet, uh, you know, in your income and opportunity is really unmatched. I mean, there's there's no limit. And that's when I realized, like, if you could do that on YouTube, the sky's the limit. So I get what Alex is saying, but yet te technically you make $100,000 before you make a million. Fine. Look at a bank, right? What is a bank? 
What is also a bank? A, a river, river bank. bank. Right. And what does the river bank do? It controls the flow. The flow of what? Water. The flow of the current. The currency. Right? So if it's controlling the currency, it's also controlling the what? The flow. The flow of what? The cash flow. So what? Money moves like water. So if I understand where the water is going to go, I just have to position myself where the cash flow is going to be next and I will get wet. Welcome to the big leagues, mother What is this? What did I just watch? This verbal diarrhea. Of, that doesn't, I feel like he's just throwing suave talking at us. It's like, whoa, that's really deep thinking. Whoa. Did, did, did you actually take away anything from that? Am I the only one just left perplexed? Like, yeah, ha ha, ha kind of funny. That, that's all this is. Uh, I'll, I'll give this clip a two out of 10, okay? Two because it's creative, but that's it. You're 24, you don't have any money. So why do you care about what stocks to get into? I'm not sure why you're sure of that, but- uh, How much money do you have? Uh, 100K plus. That's not a lot of money. You should worry about, you shouldn't worry about stocks. That's a waste of your time. You should specialize in something that nobody else specializing in that commands a very, a very large premium. Trying to turn 50, 100, 200 grand into, you know, a fortune is, is a waste of time. If the best investors in the world right now are having a hard time making any money, how are you going to do it? He's not wrong. You know, the thing with Martin Shkreli is he's thinking on a, on a, a much bigger level than most people. Most people are stuck in a thinking that's, you know, between zero and one. Martin Shkreli is playing on a game of one to a hundred. He's thinking so big. And he's not wrong in that case. If you have a hundred grand, you shouldn't try to think, how can I get a 50% return on my money every single year? I just want a hundred percent return on my money this year. It's not going to work like that. Uh, you know, even if you get lucky a few years in a row, which is statistically unlikely, most investors who aren't investing in broad index funds long term, dollar cost averaging, end up losing money when they're day trading, when they're investing in individual stocks. The returns are horrible terrible performance. So he's not wrong. So if Warren Buffett is even warning people, hey, we're probably not going to be able to get these 10 to 15% returns like we have in the past, and he's 10 to 15%, Warren Buffett, what makes you think that you could beat Warren Buffett over the next 10, 20 years? It's futile. So if you have 100 grand, I tend to agree with Martin that if you really want to do something big, you got to learn a highly specific skill and be really, really, really good at it. Buying an engagement ring with a loan. Red flag, it's a fake thing anyway. Diamonds, De Beers came up with that idea <laughs> that you have to spend like a third of your salary. Yeah, no, absolutely don't take out debt to buy a ring. That ring is gonna go down in value the moment you buy it. It's like a car, except worse. You know, the diamond industry, it's, it's so arbitrary in terms of what they resell for, like used engagement rings, used, pre-owned, whatever you wanna call it. So for a fraction of their value, the, the upsell, the markup on diamond rings is insane. It's, it's perplexing how anyone would feed into this marketing thing, okay? I'd say it's really just the meaning behind it that counts the most. If your ring is 100 bucks or if it's 100 grand, it's the meaning behind it that means uh, something. It's not you know, taking out a loan for that. Take out a loan for a house, get yourself settled, don't take out a loan for a ring. Using student loans to go through college. Depends on the degree program, but if you studied it, it's something you're passionate about, total green flag, but also work a little bit too, right? Eh, it depends on the degree and the amount of student loans. I'd say if you know what you want to do and that requires a degree to get there, and the degree makes sense from an ROI standpoint, and you could you know, work the numbers to, to be in your favor, go for it. If you're going to college to figure out what you want to do, it's probably bad. You're probably going to go into it just as confused, and you're gonna be in debt on top of that. It's gonna make the situation worse. Getting a financial advisor. But make sure that they are a fiduciary. That's a good term, here's the definition. I like him, I like him. You know, a fee-only fiduciary financial advisor. That way they're not gonna be incentivized to sell you on certain funds because they get a bigger commission. Fee-only, just a flat fee financial advisor. That's what you want. I'm gonna be 140 years old, so I'm planning on 100 years. I have time to become a trillionaire. I know how many months I believe I'm away from being a billionaire because that's been a 13-year goal. I'm deep into private equity and growing companies and just my social media company alone last year popped a nine-figure valuation. The goal of billionaire, that I set that one up in 09 and I'm close, but no, I wanna be a trillionaire. People just spout out whatever they want to for clips on TikTok. I swear the whole shorts algorithm and the TikTok algorithm is just say the stupidest stuff you can on camera that gets people triggered and they're gonna go comment and share these videos. It's just stupid. Um, 
who's, I don't get who's falling for it. Like, I see something like that. I'm like, you could say whatever you want to in a clip and you could pretend like you're talking to someone. I could say, oh, you know, I'm going to be a trillionaire one day. I'm going to live to 500 years old. Oh yeah, don't believe me? Well, you know, and it's so stupid. So in this case, you know, social media evaluations, it's really hard to value social media because it's, it's mostly on the creator. There are very few channels out there where if you remove the creator, you don't remove 90% of the value with it. I got a very high valuation on my channel in 2021, but guess what? If I stop posting or you replace me with anyone else, that, that's going down a lot. Have you ever actually sat down and figured out your overall net worth? Uh, no, I never have, but I'll, I'll tell you what, if I stop working, how much money comes in? I've stopped working a long time ago and the money keeps increasing. And the reason I talk about debt is because in 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard and the money became debt. So then these communist school teachers tell you to get out of debt. And that's good advice for the average person because debt will kill you. But debt is money today. And so when I acquire an asset, I use debt. Robert Kiyosaki knew about just saying provocative things way before everyone else. Way before. He is ahead of his time. He is probably 20 years ahead of his time. Look at where we're at now. We're saying the same things that he was saying 20 years ago. So, you know, he's been saying that, you know, they're, they're keeping you poor, they're teaching you the poor people things. Uh, he's been pushing gold for a very long time. I know gold hit an all-time high, but when you look at gold's performance versus like equities or, or housing or so many other things, it's just severely underperformed. He talked about inflation, the devaluation of the dollar. He's right on you know a decent chunk of things. I don't fully disagree with him, but at the same time, it's uh, let me say some stuff that's going to anger people online, and they're going to buy you know whatever pro I, he's selling products, uh, which is okay. Okay, you know everyone's selling something. Uh, you know I'm selling you to hit the like button to subscribe and to get some free stocks down below in the description because those could be worth a few thousand dollars and I'll get paid a commission on that. So that, that's my sale in the video. I'll get a commission, but you also get some free stocks that could be worth all the way up to a few thousand dollars. So that's down below in the description. But my point being is that uh, I've noticed in a lot of these clips, it's just a whole bunch of half-truths. It's like, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Whoa, that's kind of extreme. But wait, he said this, and that's reasonable. I believe that. Whoa, oh, th that's wild. Uh, so it's like you throw a few truth bombs at him, and it's like one explosion over here. It's like, what? But there's some truth in there. And that's a lot of social media right now. Let's say I had to have $60,000. You go to a bank, and you say, I need $61,000. They then say, okay, here's your credit. This is what we'll give you or won't give you. Or do you have an asset? that we could leverage against. I said, well, I have these paintings. What people don't know is, is anytime I did a painting, I would have it appraised. So when the bank seen it, they were like, okay, we'll give you $60,000. And here's the thing. Oh no, please don't take my paintings because I couldn't do it again. If you think about it, it's kind of a hack way. Infinite money glitch. Of selling your paintings. I could see if Alec Monopoly, who has a history of selling art, has a history of being auctioned at a certain price, could go to a bank and say, hey, I painted this thing, the floor is gonna be $30,000. It's not, it's not gonna be worth them less. The, the most recent comp is like 41. So it's not gonna sell below 30, let's just say. And I had this painting. I'll borrow against it, fine. But if I went to the bank and I said, hey, I did this painting. I got this appraisal and it says it's worth $15,000. The bank's not gonna say, all right, we're gonna take that as collateral because it's worthless. And that's because there's no sales history. Now, if I had history selling art at twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 and I say, hey, here's all these real purchases. There you go, that's a comp. But if you don't have anything, then it's worthless, okay? Now, he could, in theory, uh, maybe have like some fake sales. He could go and put them up online, give a buddy 16 grand in cash, that buddy goes and buys the piece of artwork and he gets the money back. And it, But it's like, but that's illegal. You don't wanna be doing that to defraud a bank so you could leverage your money. So I would say, Take everything you see on social media with a grain of salt. Hit the like button no matter what. And comment down below. Let me know what you think of this. So with that said, thank you so much. Get your free stocks. And until next time.